much. Now, we've been given the challenging tasks to sum up this morning's session to the very right person. It's actually Lisa Emilia Svensson, who's Director of Oceans at UN Environment. Please give her a round of applause. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you all, and what a tremendous challenge to summarize all this fantastic capacity and great ideas that you have presented here. But I wanted to take the starting point with John Eliasson that said this morning, we need to have peace with nature. And the question is, why is that? Because in the end, it's also peace with ourselves. And we know that we have tremendous pressure on our natural resources, food, energy, and water. And we need this to survive. We are growing a growing population around the world. And just for example, we mentioned here, there were some questions about Asia. Asia had a tremendous economic growth, but it was not followed by a sustainable waste management, treatment facilities. So we know that most countries and the plastic that comes into our ocean come from Asia. But we shouldn't blame them only, because we're also importing products from Asia. So we're all part of this globalization, the trade all around the world. So we're all part of this problem. But I think it's really important to address that we need to look into where the plastic problem or the production comes from. And if we look into the continent of Africa, which is a growing population, 80 person every minute is going to be born in Africa to 250. So in total, 2.5 billion people. And if Africa is going to have the same economic development as we have had, we can just imagine that there will be no fish and there will be only sewage and plastic in our oceans. So that's sort of setting the scene, or it's an urgently call what we can do. And I think a part of this is, of course, also, as was mentioned, that we need only, not only hydro diplomacy, but also ocean diplomacy. How does ocean link into our human world? We have 70% of the Earth is ocean, and that's quite important. And when we talk about blue economy, I think we haven't mentioned that concept, but a lot of the economic growth that we're all depending on comes from also the marine environment. How do we do that in a sustainable way? Learn from the previous economic models. That is the foundation to tackle also the plastic problem. And I think we heard about the plastic problem. We know that every minute a garbage truck is pulled with plastic in the ocean worldwide. And we often talk about the plastic, but we know there's other problems in the ocean. The point with the plastic, it's just so visible. Everyone understands when we see these beaches and rivers, plastic is all over, and it's not right. It's just totally wrong. And obviously, it's the canary bird in the mines. It tells us what else is going on in the ocean that we need to solve. And just to mention, we heard the coral reef, and we lost 20%, one-fifth of the coral reef for the last 30 years. And we can go on and on and on. At the same time, we also need to focus on, on the positive change, because we can change it in a way that we see the business opportunities in changing the markets to be the core driver in all this. And I think also, in talk, finally, talking about the plastic problems and the microplastic, I think it was really interesting to hear that microplastic attracting chemicals, chemicals attracting hormones or affect hormones, hormones affecting our fertility, fertility affecting our whole future generation, and what do we do with all that? So I think those stories need to be told and communicated in a very broad sense. And from the UN environment, we have a clean seas campaign that the whole message is to mobilize everyone to be aware, to educate, and to take action. And we have currently 50 countries signing up to this. And as part of this global effort with the Volvo Ocean Race, we had so many commitments from cities, governments, etc., just joining this cause that we have been working on on a very global scale. And I think it's worth mentioning India was the last country to sign up at the World Environment Day, the 5th of June. And India is 1.3 billion people. And Modi assigned that they will phase out all single-use plastic. It's a tremendous effort to do, and this is just moving ahead very fast. And a part of this is also, I think, I wanted to draw the story that when Håkan Samuelsson and we went to Alicante and we did the first beach cleanup, it's not that we can 
clean the ocean with beach cleanups, but in its awareness and education tool. And it was an eye-opening at that time, what is actually going on in our ocean. But how quick a private sector, a leader in the private sector, could for a few months seeing this and being a touch up on the huge problem and actually making a change in a few months. Single, phase out single-use plastics in cafeteria and restaurants and here today announce the ambition to have 25% recycled plastic materials in the future of the cars. And it's not only about the company in itself, it's also the pressure it puts on the whole uh, factory or the industry which in itself, and it's showing that business take a leadership and can push action forward. And I think that's really crucial to emphasize. And as, of course, we work with government, but we also need to have this redesigned, we have Stena recycling, how could we sort out, how could we recycle, reuse material? So it's sort of a closed loop, which we call circular economy. That will create an economy, a product line, that will drive the force in itself. And we, as you and environment and government, do not always have those bright ideas and dynamic force. So we need to have this collaboration, working with the private sector, working with the government to link this all in together. And I think that's really crucial. It was also mentioned that we definitely need to, when you have a water leakage at home, what do you do? You don't start to clean up the water, you, tap the, you stop the tap. And that's what we also, of course, have to do. And then we start with the cleanup. But the cleanup is a very good innovation tool on how we could move on all this. So clearly, the business sector has to be there. They have to drive this together with the government. And I think also, in terms of finding these new business models that will also create a market, that could also change into those whole circle economy that we really need for everything to change. And a sort of awareness an educational aspect that we've been talking about. We had so many cleanups. We have India cleanup, we have in Indonesia. And Indonesia is now mobilizing um, the whole army to clean up the rivers, because that's a tremendous problem in those parts of the world. It's not a warfare, it's a war to save the nature. And I think this also links into the peace with the nature, which is a cl very clear message. So when we talk about partnerships, and I think no government can do this alone, because we know when government, and we talk about them, we talk with them, and we're really driving them to take action. And sometimes we heard that today, we need to have a global convention on plastic. The problem is, it's not plastic in itself that's always the problem. It's what we do with it, when it becomes plastic pollution, oceans and rivers and pathways. So what we need to do is to create a partnership where everybody has different roles. And, for example, when we work with government, we know it will take another 10 years to get a legislative action going. And we don't have time years. In time years' time, we're going to have double the amount of plastic in the ocean. So obviously, that's something that we need to work parallel to. But the private sector have to be there changing the thing and already changing the practice tomorrow. So this is when we talk about partnerships. And once again, we talked about the Agenda 230, the 17 goals. The ocean goal is 14. There is another goal, which is really important, and that's number 17, which talk about public-private partnership. But what is that? And public-private partnership, I think the combination and the work that we had with the Volvo Ocean Race, and for all the companies out there that has joined this race so far, is just showcasing what a fantastic partnership could actually lead to. We are not controlling what we do, we're just putting out emotions and awareness, which is also a foundation of any democracy, for anyone to taking part of this, but also having a little bit of ownership, getting credibility for what we have done. Nobody wants to work for someone else taking the claim. So we want everybody to be out there taking really the proud of what you have done. And I think this is, has all been enabled by the Volvo Ocean Race during the last course. And I think for the last point, it has been a collective effort by private sector, government, NGOs, philanthropists, and all you guys sitting here, business leader, Her Royal Highness, ministers and ambassadors. And I think we also have all a collective responsibility. How do we take this forwards, but also upwards? And I think also the next race, whatever happens to that, is just showcase what a tremendous opportunity and the goodwill. Because in the end, we all want to be part of the solution. And having an added value 
to whatever we want to do and to whatever we want to work with. That was sort of my little story of this sort of this day, half day. And I think there is a much more details that we need to follow up on a very individual basis. But Mia, back to you to do the final wrap up. Thank you very much, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you very much. Now, in just a minute's time, it's time for what is called a casual lunch, right be behind you. Uh, could I just the speakers to come up on stage? It's photo session for the speakers. And could I just ask all of you to sign the Clean Seas Pledge? We have hostesses uh, going and walking around the room with iPads, so you just sign the Clean Seas Pledge. And thank you very much for all your collaboration and cooperation, and thank you for a wonderful day.